but it's not just uh, the American government listening in. <clears throat> um, it, I, I think it's it's probably to do with where the Americans want to understand. The, the Americans have two big worries. One is if they have to challenge China, because China is a major power against America. The other is Europe. If all of Europe got together, or the European countries, uh, it is a formidable force for America. Uh, and what better way than for the Americans to understand what is going on with, there are some, in each country, some 53 organizations that use Tetra. Coast Guard, Customs, Police, Secret Services, and the Americans can listen in to every single conversation. In all countries, they know exactly what is going on. So, if it came to war, and goodness knows what happens in this world, you know, one minute you're fighting somebody, the next minute you've joined and you're fighting somebody else. <clears throat> if it came to war, the Americans would have all of your military secrets, all of your government secrets, in every country. Uh, and you wouldn't be such a threat, because they would have the advantage. They, they already know everywhere and everything. In 2008, in Denmark, I was reading a document from the telecom industry. Yeah. And there was a guy I had been like pushing very much. <laughs> uh, yeah. He has a sad function to play. But he wrote somewhere, and that I stumble about. He says, it's the state that has a vision about the mobile and wireless society. And I said, uh huh, it's the state that has a vision. That's why they say there must be united <coughs> courage <coughs> all over the country. Yeah. But then I start to wonder, I say, okay, the state sells these uh, licenses for the mobile phone radiation system. They get a lot of money. They rent out positions for the mobile towers and get a lot of money. They put um, scientists on a job to find out whether it's dangerous or not. And they evaluate themselves. Yep. That all other uh, reports are useless. It's only their own scientists that know the truth. Yep. Is that, that's what we call in or how do you say it in English, when you are not, uh, they cannot play all roles, but the state does. Oh yeah, <clears throat> but they have a secret, they have a secret uh, as well. Uh, there are different safety levels. <clears throat> now, there is a safety level held by the Russians and some other countries, and they look at how uh, the waves interact with the cells. So what we're looking at is <clears throat> um, things called rectification, interruption to the cyclotronic resonant frequency, the circadian rhythm, in vibration of the water-bound layers, uh, things like that, how, how cells, they change their vibrations and they, they, they change the conductivity through the cell. Now that happens at very, very low levels. In fact, it can happen at any level below freezing <clears throat> because the waves still travel. And if you have a safety level based on that, then in terms of units, ordinary uh, microwatts per centimetre squared, in terms of units, a safe level, you're probably looking at the bio-initiative report. Um, we're talking about sort of electrically induced phase transition, uh, where the waves change phases. Um, a, a safe level is about 0.2 of one unit, about one-fifth of one unit. 
up until last year, we allowed 10,000 units because we only look, along with other European countries, we only look at how warm you feel. So the, so when the scientists do their experiments and they say this is perfectly safe, what they're saying is uh, children could play ring a ring of roses around a transmitter all day and never exceed the maximum dose because they wouldn't get too warm. Only from running around. Only from running around. Yeah. So when the warm level is 10,000, but the safe level is one-fifth of one unit. But last year, uh, our, the industry in this country, and we, we have just got rid of probably the most corrupt government ever, where I think over 60% of our parliament were found to be thieves or liars or corrupt. <clears throat> um, the last thing they did was to give the mobile industry permission to triple the amount of power and for Tetra now they've actually made an application to the government to have no safety limit at all. No limit. No safe limit. Uh, earlier this year in Denmark the politician they agreed that we should have 100% coverage indoor and outdoor within a year. That was in February 2011, so yeah. that's the same situation. Yeah. It's all over. Yeah. So there, are, there are people very, very high up, and I'm not talking royals, I'm talking there are people very, very high up in government or civil service, very high up, who have a lot of power, and they are telling the people below them what to do. And I can give you an example. Uh, <clears throat> in our parliament it took a couple of years for our MPs to uh, bring, uh, uh, going back to children, a case of children. A survey was carried out uh, around Europe and it was found that where transmitters are in school playgrounds, they found 200 schools, 200, where there were cancer clusters among the children and the staff. 200. In this country, some of the cancer clusters were 11, 12 children, all under the age of 11. And MPs took this to Parliament, a group of them, and they, they listed all of these cancer clusters in schools, mentioned all of the ones abroad, <clears throat> blamed the mobile industry, they said the mobile industry are lying, they are telling lies to parents and schools saying these are harmless radio waves, lots of things, and being uncooperative, putting transmitters up without permission and then not taking them down. And at the end, the minister who was given his what to say just stood up and said, we are within international guidelines, safe guidelines, and sat down. And that's it. But then we, we come back to uh, <clears throat> when, we, when we talk about guidelines, we have, uh, we have the IGNIAP, which is well, that yeah. is it. It's the same. It's yeah. the same, uh, and, and it's all done by the same scientists. They're all interconnected. Yeah, and this is because of this. Yeah. This is this document here. <clears throat> yeah. This one. Now, this I think this first sentence is the most dangerous sentence written since the declaration of war in 1939. This one sentence at the top from the American government. And what it says, it says, uh, and I'll, I'll paraphrase it, it says all of these illnesses are known to occur from low level microwave irradiation, the same as you get with all phones, all towers and Wi-Fi. They're saying you will get all of this. 
But then they are saying Western governments must not be strict with safety levels because it will affect what the military want to do exactly. and it will also affect industrial profit. Yes. It's exactly what they're saying here. That, <coughs> that's what, uh, you and, know Robert Becker? The doctor, yeah. he, he got yeah. sacked from that when he said that. Yeah, he, and this yeah. is where Ignerv yeah. came in. Yeah. They said, okay, we will do what the American government wants instead of having a safe level that they have in Russia and other countries, we will look at just how warm you feel and our level will be up there. And this is why. And you know when we talk about Ignia we have to talk about WHO as well because there's, those two goes to bed together. It's the but, same people. But the WHO is, is really a private organization founded by David Rockefeller. It's really a yeah. money machine. Now I, with the WHO, I was talking to one government oh, a few years ago now and the gentleman following me was Michael Rapacholi. <laughs> he was following me. Yeah. And when you spoke to this government, you had to speak under oath to this government. Uh, as you do with some of them, you, you have to swear that you are you know, under oath. <clears throat> and what Michael Rapacholi followed me, and you were also protected from prosecution. There was no slander. You could say what you wanted, if it was the truth, you could say what you wanted. And when I was speaking, I said, I do not trust this gentleman who is following me, Michael Rapacholi, uh, because I believe he is taking money from the mobile industry and he is representing the World Health Organization. And when he came to speak, he was asked, are you taking money? And he admitted he was in the payroll on a retainer of the mobile industry as a consultant. And it was a, his hourly rate is more, I think, than my years old age pension of colossal amount of money. But he, when he was representing the World Health Organization, he was also representing the mobile industry and he was being paid. He lost his job, he now works with the University of Rome. Uh, he fought a case for the mobile industry against the Vatican uh, where he lost when the Vatican were transmitting and all the children and people getting cancer. He lost that case, I think he's still with the University of Rome. But it is this ICNERP, the WHO, and our government scientists here, it's the same people that sit on the same benches. Uh, and this is one big boys club. <clears throat> and between them, and I've said this publicly, <clears throat> between them, uh, and I said this in Birmingham about eight years ago in a public conference, I said these people, this small group, and there's a very small group of people, I said, they will be responsible for more suffering and death in peacetime than all of the terrorist organizations in the world that have ever existed added together. And they will be.